He is Mexico's most wanted man. The U.S. calls him the world's most powerful drug trafficker. He's at the top of the DEA's list, number 55 on Forbes' list of most powerful people. And the U.S. is offering $5 million for him. So who is Joaquin El Chapo Guzman? They call him El Chapo, or Shorty, for his small five foot six frame. But his legend is enormous. El Chapo is part of a network of cartels shipping drugs by the hundreds of tons into the U.S. Hey there, we got what you were looking for. Yes, we did. I saw it firsthand at this southwest border checkpoint. This truck of furniture was actually hiding more than a ton of neatly packaged marijuana. There is so much drug traffic coming from Mexican cartels, it has to be destroyed at secret locations like this. The impact on America direct. In Chicago, El Chapo was named public enemy number one, an infamous title not used since the gangster Al Capone. His cartel allegedly responsible for 80% of the drugs in Chicago. El Chapo, so rich, he made the Forbes magazine billionaire's list. In Mexico, he's a towering figure of intrigue, the subject of books, songs, and folklore. Born into a poor family in the Sinaloa state when the drug trade was evolving, Guzman amassed a powerful empire, one that he continued running from behind bars after his first arrest in 1993. His reputation only grew as he spent 13 years on the run after escaping from prison in 2001, sneaking out in a laundry cart in a plot that allegedly cost him $2.5 million in bribes. He was caught and rearrested just last year at this resort in Mazatlan, in his home state of Sinaloa. This dramatic footage of the raid on a house that led to the arrest of the drug boss Joaquin El Chapo Guzman was released by the Mexican government on Monday. The soldiers involved wore cameras as they blasted their way through the dwelling in Los Moches in Sinaloa. exchanging gunfire with Guzman's henchmen, five of whom were killed in the raid. It's an insight into one of the world's most wanted drug traffickers who seem to like to mix truth with fiction. The Mexican government paraded their most wanted drug lord on national television last night. They then put El Chapo on this helicopter and flew him back to the same prison he escaped from six months ago. Authorities had stormed this house they believed he was at and found a slew of weapons, including a rocket-propelled grenade launcher. El Chapo escaped through the sewer, but was later caught and brought to this hotel. These graphic images show some of El Chapo's men that were killed during a violent firefight with Marines. Joaquin El Chapo Guzman escaped from the most secure prison in Mexico back in July. This surveillance video shows his last moments in his cell before he walks into his shower stall. That's when he climbed into this mile-long tunnel where this retrofitted motorcycle had been used to excavate his path to freedom. Last year, 60 Minutes reported on the so-called Tunnel King. Uh, the tub. Look at this. And the ingenious places he built his escape routes. That's amazing. Guzman is believed to be responsible for as many as 34,000 deaths. There was a lot of cocaine being shipped to the United States, and uh, we we're finding out that there's one person responsible for the shipment of this cocaine. The man they are after is one of the most dangerous drug lords in Colombia. His name is Pablo Escobar. Pablo Escobar at this time was the biggest, the most powerful, the most violent drug trafficker that we had ever seen. Escobar's factories are flooding the U.S. with two tons of cocaine every day. Drug-related violence has reached the level of carnage. 
This poor country boy is now the seventh richest man on the planet. He lives a playboy lifestyle on a 3,000 hectare ranch. A professional cameraman shoots his home movies. The complex has every luxury, including a private zoo with animals imported from Africa and an airstrip used for smuggling drugs and bringing in friends and relatives for lavish parties. Escobar is very close to his family. Cocaine made Pablo Escobar one of the world's wealthiest men. In the 1980s, he formed the Medellin Cartel, one of the biggest criminal organizations the world had ever seen. It supplied 70% of cocaine in America. With his money, Escobar created dozens of soccer fields, opened health centers, built entire neighborhoods from scratch. Escobar is also a shrewd businessman and knows he needs popular support in his community. He builds football stadiums and schools here in his hometown of Medellin. He gives money to the poor and they love him for it. But if anyone gets in his way... They would torture people, burn them, cut them, just to tell other people, this will happen to you if you uh, come against me. Police, judges, and politicians are no exception. In 1989, Escobar's ruthlessness reached a new level. To silence two informers, he had a commercial jet blown up in midair. 110 people died. He had no qualm about killing people. He killed at a whim. He was our number one target. In 1990, Escobar made a deal. He would surrender and serve a greatly reduced term in a cushy prison built specially for him, while the government would once and for all kill the extradition treaty with the U.S. He surrendered into a facility that was really built by him, controlled by him. He built, in essence, a country club with all the amenities, allegedly built in his property under his specifications. It contained um, hiding places throughout the buildings where he could hide money, weapons. He built a soccer field. He had a great suite for a cell, very well furnished um, sitting room, a kitchen, a big uh, bedroom with desk and uh, working area in the bedroom, jacuzzi connection to the next room, which was occupied by his uh, brother, Roberto. He could go in and out of the prison whenever he wanted to. His friends came in, and he was conducting business from the prison. Hundreds of Colombian troops are hunting the drugs baron, Pablo Escobar, who escaped from prison during a gun battle. The government was about to move Escobar from a jail near the town of Medellin, where it said he continued to control the cocaine trade. The Colombian president, Cesar Gaviria, said he would still refuse to extradite suspected drug traffickers for trial abroad. After Escobar escaped from prison, the Colombian government created the search block, a special military task force trained by the United States in order to find him. The security forces were not the only ones hunting for Pablo Escobar. There was also a death squad funded by the Cali cartel. There was an organization that formed during the manhunt for Pablo Escobar. It was known locally as Los Pepes. And that stands for people persecuted by Pablo Escobar. Um, this group basically turned the table on Pablo Escobar. They used his tactics to combat him. Those people had a lot of information on Pablo. 
And along the way, they still also started providing information and intelligence to the Colombian National Police and the DAS, you know, the authorities in general. So they became so-called informants. And in the end, the Los Pepes ended up playing a huge part in the demise of Pablo Escobar because they basically left them alone. So they sent two of their officers around to the back side of the house. Colonel Martinez is instructing them, hit the location, let's find out if it's Pablo. Let's don't take a chance on losing him. And five officers kick in the front door. And there in the garage is a taxi, a yellow taxi. So the officers, they know that Pablo was on the second floor. They make their way up the steps. And he has one bodyguard with him. Shots are exchanged. One officer, as he was running up the steps, tripped and fell, which probably saved his life because Pablo shot at him at that exact moment. Uh, when Pablo gets to the third level, he jumps out the window. He and the bodyguard are running across the roof of the adjacent row house. The bodyguard jumps off the roof. Two police officers engage him in a gun battle and shoot him dead. Uh, Pablo heard uh, the gunshots and realized that he was in crossfire. So he's trying to return fire to the apartment he just escaped out of the row house. And he's also trying to refer, return fire to the police officers on the ground. And they basically have him in a crossfire. And Pablo Escobar is killed on that rooftop.